Some quilt patterns require lots of triangles like this tree of life block. Instead of cutting one or two at a time, I like to mass produce these using a grid system. The grid can be any size depending on how many triangles you need. In this video, I'll show you how to make a grid system that will speed up your production of these pairs of half square triangles. Let me first show you how this works on a small grid. A single square will give me two triangles when cut on the diagonal. If I use two pieces of fabric, then I get twice the amount of triangles. If I add another square to this grid, I'll double my amount of triangles. Now I have four triangles. If I use two pieces of fabric, I end up with eight triangles. I could add more squares to my grid. If I need to make 16 triangles, then I would use this grid and two pieces of fabric. 32 triangles, then I would use a grid like this, also with two pieces of fabric. To figure out the size of the squares in your grid, you need to find the finished size or the shorter leg of the triangle. So let's look at this triangle here. And here's a short side and there's another short side. So that measures two inches. Add an inch to that finished size. So two plus one equals three inches. Since each square will be three inches, then my grid will measure three plus three or six inches across by three plus three or six inches down. I cut a six inch square out of two pieces of fabric. I made sure that the right sides were together before I cut. And I've cut the, these on the straight of grain and the cross grain. I used a marking pen to make these grid lines. First I marked a three inch square. So I came over three inches, marked that line. I came down three inches and marked that line. Then I marked the diagonals. As you can see on this piece. I've put the diagonals in. I will be sewing around these diagonals so no pins along the diagonal. Now I'm ready to begin sewing. I like to start on a scrap piece of fabric. Uh, so let's get that. I'm using red thread so you'll be able to see but uh, you'll want to use a matching or neutral color. I don't think it really makes any difference if I start on the inside or on the outside. So I'll start on the outside edge here. I'm a quarter of an inch away from that line. If you don't have a quarter inch foot, see my foot is exactly one quarter inch. If you don't have a foot like this for your machine, then you'll need to draw that line in. So I'm at the end, I pick up my pressure foot, pivot, and begin sewing a quarter inch from the edge. Now I'm coming to the end here, so let me clip this little piece off. Notice how I've avoided all the pins because ahead of time I knew where, my, where I was going to stitch. So I'm at the end now. I want to lift up my pressure foot and my needle, pull out a little bit of thread, and now I'm going to be sewing a quarter inch on this side of the line. Uh, so this is a little bit different. I need to make sure that I'm starting on this, this straight line here that I marked for my squares. So there we go. And I want to make sure that I end on that line. So when I get to the end. I want to slow down. I've got my needle down. I pivot I'm a quarter inch from the edge. And I work my way all the way around. So here I am again. When I get to the end, just lift up my needle. I don't have to back stitch or anything. And clip my threads. After sewing, I'm ready to cut. At this point, I want to make sure that all of these pins have been removed before I begin to cut. First, I want to cut the squares apart on these lines. Then, I'll cut the squares on the diagonal. So, let me line this up. Cut. 
and I can take these, cut them individually. I could leave it the way it was and cut across, but it's easier for me to cut like this. Now let's take this one, cut on that line. And now I'm ready to cut these diagonals. I don't have to be exact on the diagonals because the seam allowance is, is already in there. But I, I like to try to keep as close as I can. Just makes it a little bit neater on the other side. But let me show you what it looks like if I don't cut. See? It's still, when I open this up, Let's finger press it a little. I open that one up. It's going to look the same as when I open this one up. That's why that seam allowance, it's not so important on the diagonals, but it is important to get those first couple lines cut. So after I cut this now, I'm going to take it over to my pressing board and press it. And then I'm going to square up each one of those triangles. Now I have 16 squares made from 32 half square triangles. You can find more information about cutting and sewing half square triangles at learnhowtoquilt.com under Beginner Basics, Cutting and Sewing.